Something is going on at American Express. Over the last 24 hours, a lot of you commented that the gold card just added a new rule. Today we'll look at what's going on, how to navigate these waters, and also why I think it might be happening. Big favor, give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, that way other people can see this. And if you know anyone else that might benefit that would be affected, share this with them. In the past month, we have seen a lot of changes with American Express cards. As part of Delta's announcement, they did add a family rule to their cards. Initially, I, and probably a lot of you guys, thought that this initiative was led by Delta. Now, maybe not so much. In case you missed it, they added terms to the Delta cards. So for the Delta Blue, you're not eligible if you have or had had this card, the Delta Options card, Delta Gold, Delta Platinum, or Delta Reserve. It gets even more interesting once you look at other Delta cards. For the Delta Gold, they only care about that card, Delta Platinum, and Delta Reserve. Delta Platinum only cares about itself and also the Delta Reserve. Delta Reserve only cares if you had the Delta Reserve. So kind of like a cake or a pyramid that's layering on top of each other. Mapping all of this out, the blue is the most restrictive, and then it gets better as you go down. Meaning that you should start with the Delta Blue, then Delta Gold, then Platinum, then Reserve. The weirdest part is that we don't see this language on the business Delta cards. So for example, the Delta Gold business only cares if you have the Delta Gold business. We'll talk more about this later on, but you can see how they view profitability. Just this week, the family rule hit the blue cash cards. Similar to Delta, it's the lowest rung, the blue cash every day, the no annual fee card, that's the most affected. So there it cares about itself, the cash magnet, the BCP, and the Morgan Stanley BCP. If you map out this family, you can see that the BCE is the most restrictive and that you should get that one first, and then the BCP, and then the other two. As of filming, there's no language on the business cards. If you have the BPP or BBC, the Blue Business Plus or Blue Business Cash, then you're fine. The most recent victim, and what we're talking about today, is the gold. As of 4 a.m., we are seeing some pretty prohibitive language. You're not eligible for the welcome offer if you have or have had this card, the PRG, the Platinum, Charles Schwab Platinum, or Morgan Stanley Platinum. One of you guys applied and ended up getting the dreaded pop-up. Not eligible for the gold because they had the Platinum. Also, the Platinum cards have their own little family rule, which is kind of weird. So for example, the Platinum card cares about the Platinum itself, Platinum Charles Schwab, and Platinum Morgan Stanley. Same thing with the Schwab Platinum, it cares about all three other Platinum cards. In contrast, the Morgan Stanley Platinum is a bit weird. There still is some data points of people getting through and it being fine. And that's despite holding other Platinum cards. This can change at any point, but the terms don't even mention it. If anything, the terms look more like NLL offers, no lifetime language offers. Mapping out these cards given the rules, you'd want to start the gold and then work your way to the Platinum and Schwab Platinum, and then finally the Morgan Stanley. Also, the Morgan Stanley one might be due to partnerships, and that's why they don't have the rules. Another weird part is that we're not seeing it on the Amex screen at all. So that card only cares if you had that card. Traditionally, the green, the gold, and the platinum have been seen as one family, so it is weird. If you compare it to the Delta and the blue cash system, you'd think that the green would be at the bottom. I spent a lot of this night looking at every single card that American Express has, and a lot of the popular families like the Everyday, ED, Hilton, and also the business cards don't have this language. At the moment, everything else seems to be fine. Okay, so how should you play this? We already mapped out the families, so that's pretty straightforward, but what if for someone that wants the gold right now? I'd personally wait it out and apply for a similar card that offers an intro bonus. The last thing you'd want is to apply for the American Express Gold without the bonus and then have American Express change their mind in the future. Maybe they don't change their mind, but we could also see them doing a backtrack exactly like Delta did. In that case, if that does happen, then you still signed up and you're not getting the bonus. If you're focused on dining and groceries, I'd say that there's three cards you should look at. The first one is the City Premier, which is a great workhorse earner. Pretty strong multipliers and a great catch-all card. You're getting 3x back on restaurants, supermarkets, gas stations, air travel, and hotels. They also currently have a 10x offer on city travel through June 30th, 2024. Supermarkets and restaurants are great, but also gas stations because that tends to be a pretty tough category. For a lot of the other issuers, you would need to get a business card. The card does have a $95 annual fee, but should make sense if you are spending enough. You also are getting 60,000 points after spending $4,000, which is at least 600 in value and upwards of 1,200 if you do transfer partners. To get 60,000 points on the Amex Gold, you need to spend 15k. Capital One is another strong contender. The saver offers 3%, which is technically 3x miles for dining, entertainment, popular streaming, and grocery stores. No annual fee and you get an intro bonus. Similarly, the saver has 4%, which is 4x miles on dining, entertainment, and popular streaming. You also get 3% for grocery stores. There is a $95 annual fee, but should make sense given the intro bonus and your spend. I know that some people are probably still going to get the gold card because it's the gold card. 
But optimally, if a company doesn't want you right now, you might as well go to their competitors. On that note, if you want to learn about cards, whether these ones or pretty much anything else, you want to support the channel, we have links on the website, asksabi.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the offers are competitive, that the cards make sense for you, and ideally you get an intro bonus, but using those links is a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. Okay, so we know what's happening, but why is it happening, and is there a method to this madness? I have seven educated guesses, but I'd love to hear from you guys as well. First off, the gold is a flex card and in high demand. Even though I talked about alternatives, a lot of people in the comments might be like, well, I don't want a city or a Capital One card because it doesn't have the cachet of American Express. A lot of this goes back to the point of intro bonuses and why they even exist. If you take it down to brass tacks, it's to incentivize you to sign up for the card. It's a carrot. If enough people are already willing to sign up, even without an intro bonus, then maybe they don't need to give you a carrot. In an absolute worst case, this is a test, and even if it doesn't work, they can backpedal and change their mind. Best case, it saves them money. We'll dive into the financials in a later point. My second guess is that the Amex Gold is not profitable, and they need to make it profitable. In the last video, we talked about how it was due for an upgrade since it hasn't been updated since 2018. If it was making Amex a ton of money, then they would happily give out a bonus, but I think there's something else going on here. Looking at data points online, Amex interchange fees float between 1.6% and 3%. For example, restaurant purchases above 150 are at 2.75%. In this case, if you spent $1,000 eating out, which is a ton of money, American Express would make $27.50. On your end, you're getting 4X on 1,000, so 4,000 points. If you redeem it as a statement credit, that's only worth 24 bucks, which is lower than what they make, and their spread here is $3.75. In contrast, if you were cashing out with the Schwab Platinum at 1.1 cents per point, that's 44 bucks, meaning that they're losing 1650. Obviously, there is more to it because there is an annual fee, but in this isolated case, they're making 2750, but they're paying out 44. The math for the gold card doesn't really make sense unless number one, you're using it for other categories beyond the forex, or number two, you're redeeming your points less optimally for something like a statement credit. One of the other reasons why I think the gold card is not profitable is the fact that the green card isn't even mentioned. Logically and cosmetically, the green is part of the family, so why is it not the lowest rung here like the Delta Blue? Probably because it's not a problematic card given the credits and how much they're paying for them, and also how people are using the card and spending money. Number three is how the current list is structured. Maybe people that have the platinum card already don't need a carrot. Taking a look at the chart, it's very punitive for anyone that already holds a co-branded card, so B, C, and D. Could it be that these people are more likely to be optimizers who are using their cards only for specific categories and who don't really redeem their points for statement credits? And it kind of makes sense because you already have the Schwab Platinum, meaning that you know to cash it out. Even transfer partners, which you think wouldn't cost the bank that much, are pretty expensive. As someone that debated starting a credit card, the banks are buying them for either 1 to 1.5 cents per point. It's not cheap. One argument that people are probably going to make is that Platinum card holders are rich and don't need a carrot. But if that was the case, then you'd see the Platinum card listed for pretty much every other American Express card, like the BCE, the Green, and the Delta cards. So it's not the Platinum specifically, but the type of person who would have both the Platinum and the Gold. Another factor is going to be the financials. If we take a look at their Q2 for 2023, it looks pretty good. All the numbers are green and going up towards the right. Even though the numbers are great with finance, it's not just what the numbers are, but what people want them and expect them to be. So for example, for Q2 2023, EPS, earnings per share, was great, but revenue was a miss. For Q1, it was even worse. EPS was a miss of 10%. Q4 of last year was a miss for both. Back to the prior picture, among all the green, there is one that's concerning. So if we look at the bottom one, cost of revenue, is 4.9 billion and increased by 14.9%. That means that they spent 4.9 billion in order to make 13.8 billion. Also, the revenue number is up, but only up 6.7%. They're making money, but they're spending more money to make comparably less money. Cost of revenue is the money that you're spending to make your revenue. If you run an ice cream shop, the costs are going to be the rent, ice cream, as well as the staff. For Amex, it's marketing as well as intro bonuses. Looking at Q1 of 2023, we see a lot more red, and the cost of revenue number is even higher, at 27%. To be fair, these are still good numbers, but they might be trying to get it under control. Another way to think of it is that they planted seeds, and now they're waiting for it to grow. It's not really fair to compare American Express with JP Morgan because JP does have a lot more other operations, but you can see Amex diverging quite a bit. Capital One is a better comp because they are more of a pure credit card play, and they might be facing the same macro trends. For better or worse, it's their focus on credit cards. Provision for credit losses is money that they're setting aside that they think they might lose due to credit risk. 
For example, if I lent a friend a thousand bucks and I think there's a 10% chance that they don't pay me back, I'd want to account for that. Amex has drastically increased the provision for credit losses up to 1.2 billion when it was only 410 billion a year ago, three times as much and their concern is defaults and people unable to pay. To be fair, they are trying a lot of things and hopefully they get rewarded. On a similar note, if you want to get rewarded for trying out a free brokerage, then Moomoo is giving up to 16 free stocks. There's different levels, but if you open up an account and deposit $100, you get five free stocks. The money does need to stay there for 60 days. For our purpose, you can kind of think of it like an intro bonus. They are a broker dealer that's regulated by FINRA and they're a member of SIPC, meaning that you're covered for up to 500K, including 250K for cash. Link down below if you want to check it out and get up to 16 free stocks. Number five, in the meantime, it does look like they're focused on business cards. We're seeing this with the revamp of the business gold and the fact that none of this language is on the Delta business cards. My pretty reasonable guess is that people with business cards spend more money and they're less focused on optimizing categories. Factor in that a lot of the intro bonuses are exactly the same. Would you rather give $1,000 for a business that might be spending 100K a year or $1,000 to someone that might be spending 10,000 a year? Right now, business card holders might be the golden goose. That might also explain the reason for some of Delta's changes, especially since they are working with American Express. A big focus is finding higher spenders and rewarding them. The idea being that there's less people with Delta Diamond status, meaning that upgrades actually clear and you have M tier lounges. Number six is other partnerships and marketing channels. We've seen Amex focus on more festivals and events, people that might care more about the perks rather than the multipliers. It's easy to forget that there are a lot of people out there that don't care about any of the stuff that we do. So for example, my friend Henry went to a bachelor party. His friend, let's call him Albert, has the platinum card, spends more than 75K, but doesn't know that he can go into the Centurion Lounge. Henry knows the stuff, but Albert doesn't. And the funny thing is Albert flies quite a bit. There's a ton of people that have cards like the Platinum because they make a ton of money and it's the card that they're supposed to have, but they might not care about the perks. Number seven is that American Express might be focused on rewarding current card holders rather than getting new ones. They spent the last few years growing and now they're kind of reaping that harvest. Part of that is keeping the gooses and chickens happy and laying eggs. Consider that Amex signed up more Platinum card holders in 2022 than ever before, with millennials and Gen Z driving the growth, representing 60% of all new consumer card members. Six years ago, the CSR launched and was eating their lunch, and since then, they've doubled the number of Platinum card holders. A lot of it is by doing these updates, increasing the annual fee, but also adding more credits. They have a ton of members, they just need to keep them happy. For example, MX has a promo of Amazon right now. It is targeted, and I got $40 off, max discount of 60 bucks. Other people got drastically different offers, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's based off profitability or some other metric. So for example, Jay, Kevin, and WP all got 50% off with a max discount of 80 bucks. In contrast, Spida only got 15% off up to $15. Pretty good promo, but it does have to be sold by Amazon.com services. Optimal strategy is to just use one point to cover one cent in order to trigger the credit. So for me, AirPod Pros, 40% off, which is $60. Reward point balance is minus 0.01, .01 so one cent. One MR point for $60 is pretty solid. Easy pickups are going to be AirPods as well as other headphones. Also, a lot of people mentioned Ninja Creamies, which is an ice cream maker that I think is popular on TikTok. I'm kind of tempted to pick one up as well, but let me know if it's a good idea. Link down below if you want to see if you're targeted and let me know what you're buying. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebby.com, and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point, leave a grimacing emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond, and I think that's how a lot of people are feeling. A few questions for you guys. Number one is what are your thoughts on the gold change? Number two, which other cards do you think are on the chopping block? Also, why do you think this is happening? Even though I listed a bunch of reasons, maybe I'm missing something. Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favorite, thumbs up, share this with a friend, but otherwise, hope you liked it. See you next time.